are training to parachute behind enemy lines with a backpack nuclear weapon and monitoring the mission to kill Osama bin Laden from inside CIA headquarters. Just two of the accounts in a new memoir by our next guest, Michael Vickers, draws from his remarkable career as a Green Beret, CIA operations officer, and Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence, all for the new book titled By All Means Available, Memoirs of a Life in Intelligence, Special Operations, and strategy. And Michael joins us now. His service spanned both the administrations of George W. Bush and Barack Obama. Michael, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Uh, boy, what an extraordinary book this is, full of stories, but also with perspective on the world today. I have to start with a question about parachuting in with a nuclear backpack. Tell me about that. Well, fortunately, I never had to do it. But during the Cold War, um, we trained a, a handful of Green Berets, Special Forces soldiers, and Navy SEALs um, in the event of a general war with the Soviet Union to parachute behind Soviet lines and try to halt their ad advance with these small nuclear weapons. Um, there were lots of nuclear weapons uh, then. Fortunately, we don't have them anymore, you know, battlefield weapons of all sorts. And you write a lot about the book about this effort in Afghanistan. Uh, you call it a, a great war of liberation in the 1980s. What more can you say now all these year later, years later about your role in this effectively a covert war, a proxy war? Sure. Well, I was the my formal title was the Afghanistan Covert Action Program Officer, and I was essentially the chief strategist at a time when we had a major escalation. Uh, Congressman Charlie Wilson of Texas led an effort to provide a lot more funding, quadrupled our funding in one year, and then doubled it again. And then President Reagan signed a directive that changed our objective at the beginning of his second term uh, to actually defeat the Soviets rather than just make their occupation as costly as possible. So it fell to me for a couple of years to put a strategy in place that would do that. So, Michael, of course, Afghanistan is from where Osama bin Laden launched the September 11th attacks. Uh, tell us a little bit, uh, you know, that, that sort of failed state, if you will, at that time. But tell us about bin Laden there and your role in eventually tracking him down. Sure. So one of the major lessons we learned in counterterrorism policy, unfortunately, after 9-11, was never to give sanctuary to these groups that uh, aim to uh, bring destruction upon the United States. And we made that mistake in Afghanistan before 9-11, and we didn't after 9-11. And fortunately, we haven't had any more attacks on anywhere near that scale. Uh, during the uh, after bin Laden escaped from Tora Bora in 2001, it took us nine years to find him again through his courier um, uh, in Abbottabad, Pakistan, and then several months to develop options, airstrikes or raids. President Obama ultimately decided on the SEAL raid that brought justice to him, and I was very happy to have been a part of that. So, Michael, while we're on the subject of Afghanistan, let's just get your assessment of what you're seeing there now. The, the, we all saw the tumult in August of, of 2021 when the U.S. military did uh, withdraw after being there for nearly two decades, um, and, and we have seen the Taliban uh, roll back uh, rights for, for women and girls in particular, but for, for all of its citizens. Um, was that unavoidable? Avoidable. What, what, what lessons should we be learning now? What's your assessment of the situation in Afghanistan today? Well, I think the situation is terrible. It's very tragic. You know, as, as we discussed earlier, um, the Afghans played a pretty significant role in helping us win the Cold War um, and then in ki kicking Al Qaeda uh, out of Afghanistan uh, after uh, the 2001 attacks. Um, I think it was a strategic error to completely withdraw. I think we should have kept a small presence there. Afghanistan's strategically located between China, Russia, and Iran, and uh, we certainly don't want it to become jihadist central uh, anymore. Michael, this is Susan Page. Uh, first of all, thank you for your service to the country under what I know were very dangerous uh, uh, conditions. I'd like to ask you about uh, your service to a series of presidents, and I wonder when you read about what former President Trump uh, has allegedly done with classified and sensitive documents, his handling of intelligence findings. Does this cause you any concern? What do you make of this? Is this a serious matter? 
Well, I think it's, I don't know the details of the, the contents of the documents, of course, but uh, it certainly strikes me as a very serious matter. When you're entrusted with our nation's secrets, you're supposed to keep them secret, exactly that. And uh, um, whether you're a president or whether you're, um, you know, someone working in the bureaucracy. And, uh, you know, that's an oath we take seriously. We sign non-disclosure agreements. Um, and, you know, we're obligated to protect that for the rest of our lives. Well, you were there at some of the pivot points of the 20th century and into the 21st century, and I would echo our gratitude for your service to the country. The new book is titled, By All Means Available, Memoirs of a Life in Intelligence, Special Operations, and Strategy. Michael Vickers, thanks so much for being here today. We appreciate it, sir. Thank you, Willie.